Hello everyone, welcome back to a new playlist 3D simulation of structures in Prey Engineering and let's begin episode number one of this playlist which is a box type underpass with no earth fill. So on your screen there is a particular example of a single cell great separated structure. These structures can be of box shape and here we will be discussing one of the same. So traffic moves at multiple levels in such structures and in this case the traffic is moving on the top of the box as well as inside the box. It is very important to note that in this very case the crash barrier level and the top slab level are at the same point hence there is no earth fill because if there is an earth fill then lot many other factors are impacted such as the live load dispersion, the braking forces, the temperature forces, the availability of core or bracket. So that is why we are not considering any earth fill over the top slab in this case but in episode number 2 we will be having a structure where considerable earth fill will be there and we will see how that arrangement is different in the episode number 2 which will be loaded in future. So meanwhile have a look at the main structural components, the top slab, the walls and the bottom slab and another component which is the bracket or corbel that is used to support the approach slab and this is only and only possible if there is no earth cushion. If there is earth cushion no approach slab will come and there will be no requirement of corbels or brackets. So there is another component which is attached to the bottom slab and let's have a look at that from the bottom view. That component is known as the shear key and it's very important to note that shear key is present at both the ends at the, at the entry and as well as at the exit of the box and the shear key direction is always parallel to the slab, parallel to the span and not along the barrel length. You can also note that height H1 and H2 at both ends may be same, they may be different. If they are different then the average of these two heights is taken while analyzing the structure in any analysis software. This height is generally different if there are camber requirements. Now having discussed about the main components, the height variations, let's have a look at its cross-sectional view. And now we will be discussing some other components in more detail. Please note that the corbel top and the distance between the top slab top will be the depth of the approach slab which in many cases is in the range of 300 to 350 millimeters. Also note these grooves which are circled in red. These are known as construction joints or grooves and have a uh, height of around 100 millimeters. So the traffic direction inside and the op and at the top both are in different directions. We will simulate that uh, later on but also notice another important component which is the haunch. Why haunch is required whenever there is a sudden change in section or at a joint like the wall slab and the top slab are changing direction of forces. Haunch becomes mandatory and necessary. It helps in even distribution of stresses and also enhances some shear capacity and the depth of that section also increases. Now let's focus on how to develop model for analysis of such structures. So for many structures that are non-skew, per meter analysis and a line model is sufficient. All you need to do is create four corner nodes, connect those nodes and then provide as many intermediate nodes as possible. It's highly recommended that at the bottom slab, multiple nodes are there so that soil structure interaction could be simulated by effective contributory area of the nodes. But at all other junctions like the wall and the top slab, minimum five nodes between the yellow nodes are to be there. And these nodes are corresponding to various locations like the haunch start, haunch end and the mid span so that we get the results at these nodes. As many nodes you provide, it will be better simulated in the tables because the results are always present for nodes in the tables in any analysis softwares. So now it's very important to understand how soil structure interaction is taken care. This is taken care by providing spring stiffness values by making use of effective contributory area. Let's suppose we have a node under consideration which is circled and the adjacent distances of the nodes are x1 and x2. Just sum them, divide them by 2, that will be the effective length for that very node and multiply it with the width which in our case will be 1 meters and then the entire product has to be multiplied with the subgrade modulus of soil so that spring stiffnesses are obtained. Now let's talk about the directions for traffic movement. Please note the direction of traffic is both at the top as well as inside and hence these structures are to be checked for at least these three conditions. When traffic is moving at both top and bottom, when traffic is moving only on the top and when traffic is moving only inside the box. Generally it has been observed that when traffic moves only at the top, the structure is governed by movements. However, Traffic inside the box shall not be ignored because it may reduce the sagging moment at the bottom slab but the hogging moment will considerably increase if traffic at the bottom is considered. So at all, all the cases we need to consider while analyzing such structures and it's very important to note that the live load is not simply applied by axial loads or point loads. They are applied after live load dispersion which is a separate topic, we will not cover it in this episode and uh, sufficient guidelines are present in all the design codes like IRC 112, there is an NXR an extra B3 I believe where effective width and dispersed length are to be computed an entire good procedure is given. Now let's focus in more detail about the bracket or the corbel over which the approach slab will rest. So you are seeing on the screen a zoom version of the top slab and wall junction and the blue shaded portion is the bracket or corbel and also you saw I just hashed out the host portion. So this is the top slab view and now let's have a look at the shape of shear key. In this case the shape is trapezium, you can see the cross section is trapezium. Uh, it facilitates construction at site, however, option number two on the right is also widely used when it comes to shear key. 
Now let's talk about what are the loads to be considered for the analysis of such box type structures. And these are typically straightforward for all box type structures. The number one load case on your screens is the self aid then varying code, then superimposed red load. Although varying code is also superimposed red load, but in many codes, the partial safety factor associated with varying code is different than superimposed red load. That's why two separate cases, two and three are made. Then obviously the box will retain earth on each side. So earth pressure will come, live loads are charged on single wall, live loads are charged on both walls, depending upon the traffic conditions will come. And as I mentioned, that live load is applied in dispersed form for sagging, hogging and shear reactions. Apart from this, if the box does not have any fill over it, then temperature loads also play a vital role. So these are a minimum of load that has to be checked and applied on the structure during its analysis. And of course, the load combinations will come after that. Now, this structure behaves as a rigid frame, which is monolithic at all joints because the reinforcement detailing is done in such a way that the slab reinforcement goes to the box wall and the box wall reinforcement goes to the slab. In that fashion, monolithic behavior is ensured. Now, here lies a great opportunity for anyone who is interested in learning the analysis and design of these box type structures. I have created a 35 session series on design of multi cell box type bridges. You can see a glimpse of it on your screens. You can pause the video and check the contents. Please register by the link in the description if you want to learn the same. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more such content.